Doing fantastic. Roger, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see everybody. Good seeing you. It's been a while. Yeah. Hey, Tom Busby, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. And hey, you're right. It's been a while since I've been on, but uh, I tell you, it's uh, you're right about this being my favorite time of the year. I love this time of year. I'm in Birmingham, though. Uh, oh. We uh, we came up here yesterday, and um, I tell you, I've never stayed at a a Fairfield Fairfield Inn and Suite. It's a great room. It really is, you know. Uh -huh. And so. Um, join their program and they give you a, a pretty low rate which this time this time of year is good right so exactly <laughs> exactly okay well let's let's get going yeah it looks like like the early days that's right ken so let's get set back to some uh good old uh good old days of trading here and adam you can go ahead if, and stop that screen share if you want um because we're going to get started here let's first talk about risk you know, we all know that there's risk in the market. You all know it. You've been trading it. You need to be aware of it. Make sure you understand whatever you're trading before you ever click that mouse because your money is at risk and you don't want to lose it. We don't like losing it. We know you don't like losing it. And that's why we come back here week after week. We try to help you get on the right side, give you an edge, show you some tips and some tools that we use to do that. And you're certainly going to hear about a lot of those today. So let's get going. Let's get going with this great lineup of panelists from the good old days, like Ken says. And, uh, you you know, hey, just a few things that happened here in the month of September, right? Just pretty much a calm September <laughs> otherwise, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit really about, you know, since the Fed uh, pulling back, what's the current state of the market right now? What do you think, uh, Tom? How are you looking at it? Yeah, I think that, you know, it's really hard for people out there trying to trade personally because the, the market's got a lot of uh, what I would call events that could develop into pretty bad events for the market. For example, um, I don't know if they're going to shut the government down or they're going to put a deal together or whatever, but if they don't, I can tell you that you're looking at prices that are about 10% higher than they will be if they, if they do shut it down and they do go into that mode. You just mark it, mark it down minimum 10% down. And so with that overhanging the market, it's hard to have positions that expose you to downside risk. And, you know, if you're doing options, what are they? Uh, they are uh, maybe a, a, I'm a premium seller also, and having short puts would not be something I'd have going in over the weekend. So my advice is look at those and throw it out. You can always get back in if they have a good deal um, or a good outcome. If they don't have a good outcome, I think that could be, be uh, very smart to go on and just say, hey, let me take the risk off the table. We did that in all our programs today, and uh, we're, I'm very pleased. I'll sleep like a baby tonight, whether they shut it down or not. Yeah. And then uh, number two, I think this is going to develop into more, more of a problem going forward than most people do, and that is the uh, UAW strike. Mm -hmm. I think you're dealing with a guy that's in charge of the union that doesn't understand, and if you give a 40% raise, you just – as Elon Musk said, you just put them on a fast track to bankruptcy. Nobody could do that. Nobody could do it. It's impossible to give somebody a 40% raise. It might sound good on paper, and they might be trying to make up, you know, what's happened the last couple of years and the real wages, but that's not the way to do it. My solution, and nobody asked me, but my solution would be to take all those workers and put in as shareholders as uh, as part of their bonuses, making part of the uh, part of the the deal, save the company money. If the company works together, does well, the shareholders will end up with a lot more money than they will with a twenty or thirty percent raise. You know, having to pay taxes and that kind of stuff. So that would be my solution to solve the whole thing. Because I'd sign on to that in a heartbeat if I worked at a company and was going to spend you know, the next fifteen years, a better part of my life, trying to make it successful, having a yeah. piece of the pie. That's the way I would do it. But nobody's asking me. Anyway. That's a great idea. It's kind of like the ESOPs. Really but nice. I'll tell you, I tell you what, we've got uh a lot of opportunities in the market. Uh you got the right people here on this uh broadcast that have weathered a lot of storms, whether they're up or down or 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 everything. So I'm very interested to hear what everybody else has got to say. But right now I'm uh I've got money in T bills. 
I got a few speculative positions, but they're mostly bear spreads, okay? And um, pretty well cleaned up across the board. So I feel pretty good about everything. It's Friday. Been a hell of a month for DTI and the DTI customers. We've been knocking it out of the park almost on a daily basis. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just sort of interesting to all, all the opportunities. But if you look at some of these stocks, Celeste, these stocks, the high tech stocks are really, you know, are falling pretty fast in a pretty fast period of time. Apple, for example, you know, the big mama down, you know, approaching 9% for the month. Think about having 100,000 invested in Apple. You'd have 91,000 as of today, okay? It doesn't feel very Another good. No way to put it in terms. But that's what I think. Yeah, excellent. Good points, good points. Rogers, what's your thought What the, of the current state of the market? Well, I think the current state of the market is a wait and see approach. I, I actually think that the market has absolutely no idea what's going to happen, and it's trying to find a balance right now. Um, we're at a pretty strong support level right now, and I think the market's going to hold it, and I don't think we're going to have any I, – I think the government's going to be just fine. I don't think we're going to – I think the same thing is going to happen. It happens every time. They're going to wait to the last hour to see who has the most favorable conditions to try to, to negotiate this, and then they're going to reach a deal, and then the market's going to rally off of that. Um, I think this market wants to go higher right now, but it needs a little more direction. Now, am I getting – let me share my screen real quick. Uh Share my screen here. It's easier to explain all of this. So a few things. A few things. Number one, why is this always slowing me down? <laughs> always slowing me down. Yeah. But that's okay. We have we have time. Yeah. So if you look at the, if you look at the tenure, the question is, well, why aren't stocks reacting so negatively or are they going to react and they're just delayed? Well, if if you guys remember, and people have very short term memories, but remember the Fed and the bond model, the pricing model about a year ago was totally different. The price, the bond pricing model told us we were going to actually have a reduced interest rates when the and we were saying that's not going to happen. But that's what the bond model was saying. Well, that model. Obviously, they could see right now that that model is not coming to fruition, and that's what this break is. Basically, that, hey, the model and and what we thought was going to happen, what was priced into the long bond, is not what's really happening. Now, almost any economist on Wall Street or any trader on Wall Street could have said that, but who's going to argue against the bond models, right? I mean, how dare they? But that's the reason why why we have a little bit of a fall. Now, let's look at the SPY. Let's talk a little bit about and let's break everything down. One of the biggest problems that I see that retail traders are not using is the 100-day moving average. It's a really good indicator, but they like the 50, they like the 200, they don't like the 100. Well, hedge funds use the 100-day, and tech, the reason technical analysis works, folks, is because everybody follows the same indicators. So if you're looking for a good area of support, resistance, the 100-day moving average is a very good indicator that I highly suggest you all add to your charts as soon as possible. Um, you will see that the markets tend to hold around those areas or key off of those areas. Like, for example, let me give you a, a good example. Like NVIDIA right now. You can see that that we're holding we're holding off of the 100-day moving average. So please, please, please don't be foolish and add the 100-day to your charts, and you'll be able to have another area of support and resistance between the 50 and the 200-day. So now talking about the stock market. Well, what has changed in the stock market in the last three months, four months? What has changed at all? Absolutely nothing. I would actually venture to say, uh, if you were to go back to a year ago to this time frame, we were the Fed was raising rates at 0.75 a clip. We are now towards the end of the cycle, not the beginning of the cycle. So in my opinion, things are better now than they were. Now, I know, I know the Fed is saying we're going to be here longer than we expected. But a year ago, we thought we were going to be here for two years, three years. And they were raising rates at a 0.75 a clip. They're not doing that anymore. Matter of fact, and I think we should raise, I think they should raise rates. But the problem is, is that that even, even if they are going to raise rates, we're much closer to the end than we are. So in my opinion, Nothing really changed in the last three or four months since here. So I really don't see a reason for the stock market to go down unless we're going to have some some uh, deviation due to this news with the government shutdown, which I don't think is going to happen. So um, I think the market is trying to find its footing right now. 
Um, I'm not really hyper bullish. I think we're going to key off of the 200, the 100 day moving average. I think we're going to fall off of it. And I think we're going to stay in this range. Um, I think the market's going to continue to be choppy and listless and not going to give us a lot of directional bias. Um, that's, that's my, that's my view on, on, that's my broad view before I get into the nitty gritty Celeste, we should probably move on, but that's my view of the broad market right now. Listless, non-directional and very choppy. Good to know. Good, good uh, uh, key factors that you laid out there. Jeffrey Smith, what's your, what are your thoughts on the current state of the market? Um, I think it's weaker rather than stronger. We're coming into October where uh, seasonally and historically the first couple of weeks are weaker than stronger. Um, you know, historically we got a week September, which we've had that we're below our month open. We're not going to be positive on the month. And right now they're arguing we're not going to be positive on the week either. Um, so Right now, um, I think we've had our historical week, September, and I think in the first couple of weeks of October, we've continued to see the weakness. I don't think it's really going to dump off. Now, I'll agree with Tom. If we do go into a government shutdown, then there's going to be some wailing, and there's, we're probably going to get a whole lot weaker real fast. Um, I mean, you just look at you know what they do to uh, what they do shut down if they do go to a government shutdown. Um, and I think, you know, on, I'll say my side of the market, um, the USDA gets slammed, uh, when they shut down, you know, the, the, the government, um, you no know, farmers don't get loans. They don't get any help in anything. Uh, now we're in a time of year right now where, uh, you still have your corn and your soybean farmers out there, cotton also, but, uh, for the most part, most everything else is pretty much harvested out. So it's not going to be that bad, but if they, you have a crop loss, um, all of a sudden you're not going to be getting paid for that crop loss. Uh, so you're, I mean, there's going to be you know, some hurting on the on the farmer side of things. So I think, you know, if, if they do do that, now if they don't, I think we're going to have a nice little rally back up and everybody's going to be going, whew, that's good with that. Um, the, the UAW thing, um, you know, I that's kind of a, in my opinion, kind of a catch 22. You got a lot of people that are you know, not going to be working. So there's not going to be a lot of demand on gasoline. You've seen gasoline very weak. Um, even though crude oil has been trying to move up, uh, gasoline has been quite on the weak side of things just because the demand of it is starting to slow down. Um, we've gone from uh, somewhere around, you know, 260, 270 a gallon. We're down at 248, 245 a gallon right now. So gasoline prices are coming down. Um, I think that's going to kind of help things, but you're not seeing that at the pump at all. That's the thing that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit is I've seen you know, gasoline prices pull back quite a bit, yet it's not moving at the pump. So I don't know if we're still having, I mean, you've got transportation costs that are really high. You know, diesel prices are pretty high. So that's actually booing those gas prices at the pump. And so you've got kind of a KISS 22 there, but I'm hoping as time kind of goes on here, we start seeing a little bit weaker prices at the pump, you know, for everybody, you know, filling up their tanks and things like that. So, but I think overall we're, I'm more on the weaker side than the stronger side, not to say we'll have up moves. I actually was getting a, a little bullish this morning when I saw us break above the week open up there at 43.65. And I was just like, Hey, they're actually going to pop this thing up into the end of the month. And of course it didn't last and the opening bell came in and psh, off they went. So <laughs> that was just kind of a, I got you hung along and, and we're going to go back down again. So, I mean, that that's what you really see in this market though. Uh, you look at yesterday. I mean, you could have been long, short, long and short and made money and they didn't go anywhere. <laughs> so it's just, it's just chewing. Roger's right. It's, I think there's going to be a lot of chew and chop going forward. Um, you know, I don't know about our little Santa Claus rally at all, I think if they get this UAW thing out of the way and we get a budget, you know, we might have a you know, a nice little rally going from, you know, late October and through November. Um, but if they keep this stuff up, what they're doing, I, it's just going to be a chew chop market and we'll just have to see what it does. I just wanted to add, uh, first of all, I have a question for you, Jeff. What do you think about the U.S. dollar? Um, U.S. dollar is actually broken out. Uh, it's gotten very strong. I mean, it has a lot of resistance between that 105, 10550 area. And they popped that, um, which I was very surprised. You even saw gold dump below 1900. 
That's where um, I was going which, with this. <laughs> which I was, I mean, when I saw that, I was just like, okay, gold's agreeing with what the dollar's doing here. Uh, you've had a little correction in the dollar today, but still is very strong. Um, so I would keep my money in U.S. dollars, not in foreign currencies at this point in time. Um, and if we get back above the, uh, you know, the 106.75, 107 area, I think they're going to try to go back up to about 109, 110 again on that dollar index. I don't see how it can but I think it might try to do it. Um, yeah. So that's that's one thing that you know I've been kind of watching there. How do you yeah. follow, hey Jeff? How do you, you know, we used to trade the dollar, but how do you specifically follow the U.S. dollar? You know, I screwed everybody when they started charging what one hundred twenty five dollars a month to get a real yeah. live quote. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but is there a website we could go to to get a live quote of the U.S. dollar? I used the currency and just sort of. Yeah, Swag. that's what I do, Tebow's currency. Yeah, yeah you I can. Use, I mean, you you can use the the Euro US. That does a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, but if you're, I mean, if you go to here, I'll just let me let me share my screen. There you yeah. go. Everybody wants to share their screen. Yeah, and <laughs> while, such a while sharing you, group today. While you're sharing your screen, just wanted to say, folks, if you're really worried about this this government shutdown, Moody stock, the stock that I just had on my list, that let me explain. U.S. will change their credit ratings if we default, and Moody's is a credit rating agency, and it's sitting at the 200-day moving average right now. Yeah. And I think I think you guys know where I'm going with the rest of this story. <laughs> so if they're going to shut down, if they're not, Moody's is going to come up, and nobody knows. That's why it's at the two. But the ticker symbol is MDO for for all of you. Sorry about Jeff. I, nice. I didn't. Oh, want good. To... No, it was really very nice. <laughs> What's that symbol, Roger? M what? Uh, MCO. 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 MCO, sorry. I, okay. Yeah, MCO, and I'll 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 show it up again on my screen. But it's right at. Take a look at it, Tebos. It's right at the 200 day moving average right now, just sitting there waiting for to see what happens. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Please. Yep. This is investing.com. Um, I use this site for like economic news and stuff like that. And this is this current week here. You can kind of see down through here. But over here on the right side, they have this little box. And on the indices, the very, very bottom one says dollar index. And I have that up over on this screen um, when I'm looking at the, I can pop over this and look at what the dollar is doing back and forth. Now I'll watch the euro currency futures um, just to kind of see what they're doing. And of course, I'll also look at the Canadian dollar, the yen and stuff like that. But one thing that's nice about the dollar index, it kind of throws all those together for me. And I can just kind of watch it kind of move up and down. Um, but it's still holding above that 105.50, as you can see there. And I think it's going to be trying to move back up. We were up around 10, uh, what was it, 106.20 yesterday. So they corrected it back a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, right now, uh, gold's going to be kind of correcting back. And silver's actually been holding up the best uh, of the metals in this sell off. Uh, you've had copper move down from that 190, uh, the 390 area back down to right around the uh, three. Uh, 65, 370. Right now, it's trying to hold above 370. But that's the that's the one thing that you know I've been kind of following along is you know as the metals have been correcting back. Um, every time I sit there and go, "Ooh, we're at real good support here," and I look to maybe buy a gold. Then I look over at the dollar index and I'm like, "Ooh, but that's going above here now." Yes. <laughs> so I, I get real cautious on doing that. So, but this is where I kind of keep a glance on you know, on the dollar, and it's not. I mean, it's close to live it's not exact but it's good enough and i don't have to pay for that good all right that's, let's that's uh, let's that's transition to you, by the way that's uh, for anybody who wants to see that what, what jeff was just showing you you can go to tradingview.com it's free mm -hmm. tradingview.com has it yeah yeah that's uh, so good. Excellent. That's a great recap of the current state of the market. Let's transition. Let's kind of find out how we can make some money in this market. Tom, I want to hear from you. You, you said September has been great for all of you DTI. I know you've been up and down, you're trading to the long side, trading to the short side. What do you have up your sleeve? What's working for you? What do you want to share with the folks as a way that they can get an edge uh, going into October? Well, I've been, there's a couple stocks out there that are like, you got to, Picture they're like an inner tube and the air is coming out of them. And and I think uh here they are. Dollar Tree. You might throw Dollar Tree up there. Dollar Tree, we've been on this stock for about a month and a half. And you know, I I guess it's it's just I got on it 
up there when it broke down that day, it, the percentage drop was so great. And then when it broke that next day, I've been shorting that stock. And, and now I'm flat. And I'm really waiting to see if you get a little rebound here and rolls back over again. I think the stock itself is probably headed, if I had to guess, somewhere around 97, 98. So there's a little bit more room to the downside. And that goes down even when the market goes up when it's having a down day. So you ought to put that on your watch list, Dollar Tree. Another stock that that uh, got a lot of attention and I was waiting for it to cool off was NVIDIA. If you look at NVIDIA on here, it's probably, I guess everybody says it's the greatest stock of the last you know, three or four years. And if you look at it, it went to what, 502? 502 area up there. Yep. Well, I told people, our subscribers, I said, this stock breaks 490. I think it's a sell. Well, boy, was it. It went down to about 411. It's recovering. We're going to hit about 445, I would say, the resistance area. If it can't get above that, it's going to return to those lows. And so that would be an area I'd look at, NVIDIA. And then uh, those were two shorts there. Disney. Uh, you know, let me count the ways that you could have made money with Disney not being long. Look at that stock. Okay. My next stop on it, if it breaks 79, I'll get short again. And there's a, another short. Now I picked shorts because I like to short stocks because it's just, it's sort of a, a, a thing I like doing. Okay. And, um, uh, but you get one of these stocks that starts, leaking air. They don't stop leaking everybody. And I especially love it when they come out and say, hey, we're buying shares. Put Oracle up there. Yeah. Okay. Oracle's got that same setup. And we we got short this memory, Jeff, at uh, Sawgrass, Oracle. Mm -hmm. We did. And the CEO came out, uh, was on, I guess, one of the financial networks. And was talking about how they're buying all, they got all this money and they're buying their stock. Well, that was when it was about 115. And now what is it? 105, 105, 105.99. right now. Yeah. I'd say it takes out 102.40. It's there. And the last one I want to talk about uh, is the bond market. Now, my view on the bond market is a little bit longer term than short term. Uh, five years ago, I was with a small class and it was trading 170, right, Jeff? 170, 150. And I said, folks, I think this is the trade of a decade. You can get short. It's going to have some pain and suffering. But I think this this uh, U.S. bond is going to make it to par. Well, we're about five and a half years into it. And you can see we're about 114 right now. I think you're going to see, you're still going to see par. So how are you going to get to par? Well, first of all, Let's talk about inflation. You've got inflation that is sort of embedded in the economy. And it's not just the UAW wanting wage increases. All these unions want wage increases. And that's going to pass along. And if you try to go buy a house, it's been crazy in the housing market. Prices of, you know, where we live, I don't, Roger, I don't know if you know this or not, but the average inflation from 2000 or average growth from 2015 to 2020 was 14%. From 20 to 22, it was 44%. Now think about that, the price of a home. Then <laughs> flip that out a little bit. Roger's smiling because he's got all that equity in his house. But what a what a deal, right, Roger? We stayed, we stayed for the run, didn't we? Anyway, oh, yeah. it's but it's a great, but but what I'm getting at is think about somebody trying to buy a house at mortgage rates at seven and a half, eight percent. Well, let me tell you, it wouldn't be so bad if we'd come down from 12 to eight, but going up from one to eight is tough for the economy to absorb. And there's got to be a little, uh, what I call demand destruction, but at the same time, lower price houses now are being affected by that. Unless you could stroke a check and pay cash, uh, you're, you know, you're going to be paying a lot of money at the current rate. Somebody said two hundred thousand dollars more after seven years on a, on a, you know, four hundred thousand dollar home. Okay, and then I got one thing for car buyers. Okay, I have leased cars the greater part of twenty years. Mm -hmm. 
I've always leased cars. I don't like, one thing I don't like doing is have to negotiate with car dealers. I know I'm getting screwed. And if I got any car dealers out there, y'all are so good. I gave up years ago trying to negotiate. And I just, I just paid the price and go. So I started leasing cars. We had a low interest rate. It was always a good deal. Business right off of that. I went looking for a car. If you buy a car now on a lease or finance it, you're paying 25% if it's a more than what the list price is over the course of the loan. And I thought, you can't do that. So that's got to hurt most people when they realize what I figured out. You can no longer do it. Can't lease them. So that, so that means the used car market, which has a lot to do with inflation, I don't believe is going to fall off the fall off the face because if you go try to fix a car now, the parts of fixing it are high and they've got these, uh, I guess these contracts you can buy for replacement costs, but not to get into weeds here, but if you got a car, you got to you got to think how much money am I going to have to put in there if it needs repair? It costs you an arm and a leg, especially if you don't know how to fix it. And I don't know how to fix things. I think that's why Carvana stock has been going up lately, T Buzz. Yeah, Carvana is a great story. Remember, we talked about that when it was in real trouble. I said if they pull it together, this might be a good buy. And I was looking at it the other day, and I I forgot about that conversation, Roger. And look at it now. Yeah, I mean yep. it's crazy. Yep. But anyway, I would tell you, and I would tell everybody out there, caution's in the wind. It's better to be in the dugout when you got so many uncertainties until we get through this weekend, at least until we start next week, I think, from a short-term trading standpoint. Uh, Tom, would you like to share your uh, your uh, opportunities with the folks right now? Yeah, or, sure. Let's yeah. do that, if you will. Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Because I want you all to hear this. That's why I was so excited for Tom to come on, that you could hear exactly what he's doing, how he's approaching it. I mean, th this is this is a phenomenal process you're about to hear hear about. So get your pen and paper out, take some notes. Yeah, one of the things, to just give people a background, one of the things DTI, I think, has mastered, and Celeste, you know this to be true, as a former student, uh, we are live traders in real time in front of a crowd. I don't know if it's because I like to show out. I had figured the motivating force of, in fact, I really enjoy standing in front of people and trading. Well, the next best thing to it is live trading. And Jeff Smith has become a real great showman here, okay, when he trades. And I can say, Jeff, find us a trade or I'll find one. But we had a concept I developed about a year and a half, two years ago called Payday Friday. Fridays is a day that if you want to day trade on Fridays, I like to day trade on Fridays. And for myself and Jeff does, we all talk, this, so let's just make a formal program out of it and we'll call it Payday Fridays. Nice name, right? So we get together on Friday morning and we do it from time to time. October is one of those months that we're doing it. And, and it's a, a way you can participate in about an hour and see live trades develop right in front of you. It's great education great education so uh and we have a lot of fun and i love people who say hey tom we got to have payday friday so they push us they want us to do it last month now we're going to do it in october and there's a reason because october is the first month of the quarter and the first month of the quarter really puts the odds in your favor because with the dti approach we always are in front of the trend we always try to do that so next slide please am i moving in or is yeah, you are. Wow, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the the master of your own destiny today, T Buzz. Yeah, really. Let me get it moving here. Hey, it's back. There we go. <laughs> okay, our goal is give you confidence as a trader by trading live alongside myself and our staff at DTI, and we bring about a hundred plus combined years of a good experience. We had some bad experiences, but we don't talk about that because. We just use that as our knowledge base uh, to identify the best setups to potentially trade on a Friday. The best traders make key decisions so you can find out how to set up, how to look at the market in the morning. And we're, I, I would say that when it comes to in the morning, you know, that first hour, 
is a very tough hour to get on the right side. But if you can get on the right side in the first hour, that's what a true day trade really looks like over the course of the day because you really can squeeze that pickle. Now, when to enter and exit, best trading results that you'll ever see. They say, I think if you watch us trade, you know, Jeff, I asked Jeff one time, Jeff, I've been day trading live in front of people for 20 years. And this is how my memory is. He says, he said, yeah. I said, have I ever lost? Because I, I, if I have, the losses are very small or something. I forget. I remember one big loss in Canada when I used to let this uh, let the audience come up and trade my account. She was clicking silver and got me long about 20 silver while I was I was long. And I took a big hit there. But I don't ever, it might be mine, but we keep the risk low is the bottom line. Now, live trading, Friday, education market starts next week. Don't have to wait a long time. All sessions are recorded. There's an educational value in edu every session. People say it's the best value that we do, and I agree with them because we're live, the whole team's there. It's all about a chance to make money while you learn. And Randall said he likes the program. Uh, nothing like, earn. I guess, to simplify it, earning and learning, you know, nothing like hands-on and making money. Now, what you'll learn, key techniques, how to do a trade setup, how to enter a trade how to find out the best place to put dollars that time of morning. It's designed to take advantage of market action at the end of the week, every Friday. Now let's get you involved. It's real sick. Here's our six. Here's our session, sir. October 6th, next Friday, the 13th, the 20th, the 27th. Easy to remember. All you got to remember, hey, they're going to trade live there. I better go show up. If you don't make it, watch the recording. A lot of value. All four sessions are priced at $99 one-time payment. We're not taking payment wow. plans on this deal. We're letting you we're letting you be a big boy and pay the 99 bucks up front to be part of it. That's There'll fantastic. Four live sessions. And if we don't perform the way I'm talking about us perform, we'll give it back to you. I I mean, that's the way I feel about it because the odds are in our favor based on our odds. So show up, be part of it, learn from us. Go to dtitrader.com slash payday, or you can talk to one of our friendly sales staff at 904-416-1776. That's it. That's straight to the point. Any questions I might add? This is very, very good price, T-Bus. $99? I yeah, mean... I, yeah. One time, I, you know, I told him, I said, you know, we could raise the price. Everybody else has inflation, but they <laughs> kept it here. And I said, okay. 99 bucks. It's almost like we're back in the seventies or something, you know, no, I mean, we, this is, this is low folks. I, I thought it was going to be like 1997 or something. Uh, $99. Wow. Wow. Really folks good. watch a true legend trade live. Join this, this guy, there's not a lot of folks like him around doing what he's doing. Watch this. You will learn, you will gain value. I promise that whatever it costs, you will gain more value than the cost. I guarantee you it will. Right. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. Tell, and what would you get? Go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say. I used to tell people, I said, everybody wants to know if Houdini can get out and, you know, and, and breathe, right? When you go pay to see Houdini. When you watch Jeff and I do this, you're watching Houdini live and act. Can they really pull off a winning trade in front of you? That's that's what everybody likes to see. Yeah. Well, and Marie's saying, hey, you get to see the recordings as well. So you can go back and follow. Because I know Jeff and Tom, I know they they over deliver. They are going to over deliver on Friday. Not all, only are you going to earn but and learn, but you are going to be able to consume a lot of years, decades of experience that you're going to be able to use over and over and over again. It's going to be powerful. I When Tom does this, it's and Jeff, you're getting like, you're getting both of these guys. So you're getting what, about a, almost a hundred years of trading education education and uh, approach to this market. The other thing I really like about this is it's going to be in October. What a key time. You're going to see the government, uh, whether it shuts down or not, and the impact of that. You're going to see when does it turn? When does it not turn? Um, you're going to be with him every Friday in a very, the, uh, probably, in my opinion, the most important month of the year. So it's worth a couple more zeros, at least adding on to that. Thanks for offering it, Tom. Hey, remember when you joined years ago, you said, well, what's your best, best month? I said, well, my, my best month, is my best quarter, October, November, December, usually takes me about 10 months to figure out exactly how, how to do things, I guess. And then 
that last three months of the year is always a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because, is this, are you going to be doing options? Oh yeah. We'll be doing options with, well, you know, we can do anything anybody requests, but we really focus on options. We usually pay somewhere around 80 cents to 90 cents to a dollar to our calls. Uh, Jeff and I discovered doing this, what the last time in July, just how valuable it was to go at that price point. And it really, really sort of nice. Nice. We can put it in. We got our targets, everything set, and you go about your business. It's pretty easy, easy to set it up and trade once you get the direction right. There's there's a couple of really good questions, T Buzz. Um, yeah. Are you gonna a? Are you two questions? Are you going to give them any material before Friday to study to get familiar? Yeah, Marie with? pointed out the wealth of the intellectual property that they get access to is worth the whole game. They go back and watch all these trades and see, you know, watch three or four of them, an up trade, a down trade, a different instrument. So you get that. And uh, Tim says, is it lifetime access? No. Let me answer that question, Tim. No. I'm just going to say, hell no, it's not lifetime for 99 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, that that's gonna be great. Great, and just to clarify too, does it it starts at nine o'clock on Friday? Is that right? Nine fifteen. There'll be a couple of exceptions to that. Nine fifteen. Uh, we'll start at you know ten fifteen on maybe one of the Fridays, but most of them are at nine fifteen. and they'll get notice. I assume you know. Oh sure. Yeah, emails sure. and and everything. But is there any material that they'll be able to look at before the first Friday, or do they just come showing up on Friday ready to go? Jeff? Um, I think we'll just show up on Friday ready to go. We will record all the sessions so they can go back and review all the information that we uh, go through, but um, just come there ready to click a mouse. Excellent. Excellent. Maurice, yeah, you got, but, but what I would do life. is go, go sign into the Payday Friday and look at some past trades to give you a flow. It's pretty simple, but once you watch a couple of those, you'll have it down. So the question I ask, can you buy an option for 80 cents to 90 cents? Do you have the ability to do that in your account? If you do, then that's what it is. Then you got to figure out how much you want to risk during this time period. Um, and, you know, that rest is you put it in, you put your target and move on. Excellent. Great. Well, everybody just sign up. It's the, the link is posted there in the chat. Adam has put it there. You can call, pick up the phone, or you can just click the link and get ready and get October going on a great start by spending every Friday morning with Jeff and Tom. It'll be fantastic. Really excited that you, that you've offered this folks. Uh, now, Tom, is there, are there some things that you need to get going and doing? I, I was under the impression you're, you're probably visiting uh, family and everything. I don't know if you need to get going. I want to be very, well, sensitive. actually, well, it, actually, Celeste, it worked out at the time I said, I'd do it. I had planned to do something, but, but it worked out. I'm in front of the computer so I can stay and listen and anything you need me to do. Excellent. Well, let's just keep that link handy and let's talk about and, and feel free. So the link's going to be posted. We'll come back to this slide back and forth, Adam. Uh, but, you know, if you want to take over the screen share, let's go. Let's kind of talk. Roger, Jeff, Tom, what are some you know, what do you look for when you're setting up? You know, give us we'll just take a little bit of education right now. What kind oh, of things do you look for? Hey, Celeste, a lot of people have day trade issues because their accounts less than twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. Here's a promise I'll make you during. In this payday Friday session, I'll show you how to avoid that stupid rule. I've taught most anybody that will listen, but that'll be one of the promises I'll show you. You can day trade as much as you want to if you use my technique. Excellent. Let's uh, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know kind of how you're going to find setups. Uh, and even Roger, I know you you've been knocking it out of the park too in your room as well, doing a lot. Very active. I've heard amazing things from a lot of people. What are some things you know, Roger, that you look for in setups? Jeff, you know what are, what are you going to be looking for on Friday? To, uh, give us a little education. Well, let me let me share my screen real quick. I'll 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 just do this real quick. So I'm sharing my screen. What you're looking for at is a it's called a drill down screen. So at any given time of day, I can go over here. I can just click. Let's say that uh, I want to know right now. I want to know what's the strongest sector in the market and what the strongest stock in that sector is right now, this second, right? I click this button here. I see consumer cyclicals right now are leading the market and their volume is 38% higher than it is at any given time over the last 100 days, this time of day. Now, let's say I click on consumer cyclical. 
This will give me every subsector or the industry in consumer sec in the consumer the cyclical nice. so that I can organize it by strength or weakness. And I could see that footwear right now is the strongest industry. I can click one button and I can get every stock in that industry and I can have it by strength to weakness. So I could literally tell you by looking at this chart throughout the day, I could tell you all this, all the industries in technology. I could tell you which ones are buzzing, which ones are not, and I can go through any stock. So the first thing I would do is I would, I would recommend everybody go through this exercise. Now, a lot of folks don't have this program, but you could do this. A lot of programs allow you to do this. Consumer defensive. So you want to get an idea like today, for example, industry, industrial healthcare and energy are the weakest sector. Okay. Well, let's, I don't want to, I don't want to sell energy stocks, but hypothetically, let's say I did, I can go to right here, click on energies, go to oil and gas equipment. I could see what the weakest sector is in within that sector. And then I could start looking at the weakest stocks in that sector. And I just did that with one click of a button. Beautiful. Pretty cool, right? Very, very cool. What, uh, what, are, what are you in? What that's, this is, is that... TC 2000. It's a $30 program. It, it's, it's a $30 program that I'm switching. I'm, I used to use stock fetcher. Now I'm using this, but nice. it's great for drilling down and it's very fast. You can think or swim is pathetic. I'm using it here. It takes 10 seconds for each chart to load. I'm going through like hundreds of charts here in a second. Nice. So it's, a, it's, it's a great program. It's very flexible. It has every scanner you could ever imagine and all that other good stuff. So once I go through here and once I, I go through here and I find out where the money is. So right now we could tell that today, for example, money's in the consumer cyclical technology, in the, in the consumer cyclical technology and the real estate sector. Oddly enough, real estate's been buzzing after home sales uh, fell off of a seven and a half year low. Go figure. I guess they were expecting that. And then I would go to a more complex program or a setup that I haven't just set up there yet. And I would start looking at. Let's just go to my filters. I would keep in mind, I would keep in the back of my mind that technology right now is doing really, really well. And then I would just go right here and I would look for stocks. This doesn't do it in real time. The other one will do it in real time. And I would look for stocks that are making right now 50-day uh, 50 50-day 50 breakouts, which are should be right here, 50-day highs. And you could tell right now there's not many. There's only six stocks. CF Industries, J-Bill still going up, uh, EDU, and a couple of stocks that are fitting my selection. And you could do the same thing to the short side. Now, what I recommend everybody does, the first hour of the day, let the market, let the algos, let the hedge funds, let them have their fun and figure out what the tone of the day is, okay? After that, so the first hour, you're just looking at these sectors. You're looking at these industries. You want to you want to lean on the strongest stock in the strongest sector in the strongest industry, or the weakest stock in the weakest sector in the weakest. You do this. You layer down. It's a top down approach, and then you start going to here. You start looking at these stocks. What stocks are rising? Which stocks are falling? Well, Johnson Johnson, um, Merck, healthcare stocks are falling. Okay. So then we would go to bar chart or whatever program you're using, and you would go to J and J, for example. I'm just giving you guys a real, real simple way of, of analyzing stocks that can help you and give you a good lifelong understanding of how to do this. So you would look at Johnson Johnson, which I told you this this morning in my video was very, very weak. And here's the S&P 500. And now what we want to do is we want to look at the S&P 500 in relationship to Johnson & Johnson. In the last month, the S&P, in the last five days, the S&P has been going up. What is Johnson Johnson doing? It's been going down. What do you think will happen if the S&P starts going down and Johnson Johnson's already really weak stock? You're going to get a lot of tailwind at your back. Now, let's say we're dead wrong. We're wrong about everything I just said, and the s and is going to bolt higher. Well, what happens when the S&P bolts higher? What does Johnson Johnson do? Nothing. You've got yourself a nice extra layer of safety there. And uh, this is very, very simple. It's relative strength based on the SPY versus the, the stock. And you could do it on a five-minute basis, on a 30-minute basis, on an hourly basis. And our indicator is going to do all of this for you automatically. It's uh, Today's the last day we're actually tweaking it. It's almost done. But uh, you could see right here that 
spy's going up, this is going down. If the spy starts going down, you can lean on this pretty heavily. What I just showed you probably took me eight to nine years to figure out. And it works like a charm. Boom, boom, you guys boom, want yeah. a day trade. If you guys want a day trade, if you want an active trade two, three days, there's no better way than doing this. And mo we had a hedge fund guy that was in my cl uh, class today. He was doing it for 15 years. I said, hey, would you do it any differently? He said, no, that's exactly how I would do it. Same thing, no difference. So this is how professional traders trade. They don't look at tops and bottoms. They don't look at, 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 at Gann or Elliott wave lines. This is what they do. This is yeah. a good good framework for you. And if you guys want to learn more about this, just come in my VIP room. And uh, we do this an hour every day. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Hey, make sure. And that's a great uh, say. Everybody should be on uh, Tom's Telegram, uh, DTI Telegram, Roger's Telegram. You ought to be on my Telegram. Uh, but be in there because because uh, Jeff and, and Tom... Uh, Roger said some familiar things, didn't he? Some things you guys are even going to go over even on Friday. So Roger just shared a lot of great tidbits. I don't know if DA or Adam, if you have a telegram uh, that you can put in for, for all of these guys, that'd be great to get that. So um, uh, we've got just a few more minutes. So Jeff Smith, why don't you kind of piggyback on, you know, what Roger was just saying and, you know, how do you find setups? You know, what are you guys going to be looking for? Anything you want to add to that? Um. So there's several things I look at. Um, this is what we call a dashboard right here. Um, you got a chart on the right side, and over here you have just kind of a list of stuff. This is just all commodities. Um, get something more you're more familiar with. Here's a whole bunch of stocks. So <clears throat> in here I have, I don't know how many stocks are in this list, um, but I just over time have just kind of accumulated a bunch of them. And what this does, this is kind of an, on an intraday basis here. But we just go over to swing, it'll re jostle itself out a little bit. And what it does is it takes these stocks and it puts them in order. Um, what we call what we call the horse race, um, but it puts them in order of strong to weak. You can do it weak to strong if you want to do it that way. Um, and it does that from a percent change from open. This is going right now based off the month open. So the ones that are in green um, are ones hitting the buy zone or above their buy zone on the chart. Uh, the ones in red are in the sell zone, but the strongest ones are at the top. That means Jinko, Solar, Williams, Sonoma, Nike. Uh, and I know Ni uh, Roger was talking about Nike earlier this morning. Um, and uh, you have XOP, which is you know the oil exploration. Of course, down here at the bottom, um, you've got Newmont, XLU. you got basically your um, utility guys, um, and some other ones in here as well, but I can come in here very quickly and see who's long, short, just on a very, very quick look. Um, we also have several scans and one that I like is one called high noon. It's a shorter term basis of things. Um, but what it does, it goes out and looks at the month open, then looks at the previous week's high and low, which shows that right here on this table. Here's your month open. Here's your last price. Here's the previous week's high and low. And if we're above all of those, it's on the green side. If we're below all those on the red side, if you're in between, it won't even show up in the scan. And down here at the bottom, I can look at who's going up. And these are your strongest ones to the upside, basically using the same concept as that dashboard. It's got a horse race on it. And here's your weaker ones to the downside. So now the question is, on a longer term basis, I mean, you're literally looking at the month open, the previous week's high and low, right? So a lot of times what I'll do, Tom, actually, he and Tom Delachey made something called the MTI here. And so if I'll come over to this and pop it in here and just to see what their trends are, the left side on this is a daily chart. The right side is an hourly chart. And you can see the white lines here are basically your your week opens. The blue bars here are Monday's high and low. That's what those blue little flags that you see here. So on this stock, we uh, had a high of uh, 154.48 and a low of 150 on Monday's high and low. And here we are trading up at 168. Just knowing Monday's high and low and buying it above that helped you out. But you can also see it's been trending up. And here on a shorter term today, it's been kind of moving up as well. Um, but I'll grab those off of those scans and start throwing them in here just to seeing if you know, the real big picture is long, short, or whatever it may be. Um, and once I do that, I just start trying to figure out from that point, um, 
what kind of options does it have? Can you drive a truck through the spreads or um, can I, you know, find something that's all nice and neat? And, and if I don't like the options on it, I'll throw that one in the trash can and go find something else. So, but these scans um, go through the S and P 500, 400, 100, NASDAQ 100, of course the Dow 30 is in there. Now through a bunch of ETFs in there and then the top 100 market cap stocks of the Russell one, uh, 2000. So, it goes through all of those every single night and kind of spits this out and lets me know who's up and who's down. Right. So That's, I got so a you question can, for you. You can see that there's a lot of ways now that you can, you can, uh, you can approach this kind of day market and Roger typed some good things in there too, as well. So, uh, and if you could put that uh, Tom slide back up there, the opportunity for everybody to get involved for that uh, uh, payday Fridays, you're going to cover a lot of things. Some people were saying, hey, will you cover commodities? Are you kidding me? Jeff and Tom talk about, oh yeah, you're going to talk about, you <laughs> You ask the question, they're going to address it. So what's up, Raj? I got a question for you. This horse race, it's called horse race. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Question for you. You said in the beginning that you organize it based on, on uh, percent change from the open. Correct. Okay. So, and you're looking at a lot of stocks, right? Correct. Like a bunch. Okay. So what if you have a utility stock that typically fluctuates a dollar a day, like quarter, you know, half a percent a day, and you have a stock like NVIDIA that fluctuates 3% a day? How do, how do you adjust for that? Um, well, from the open, when you have, um, I mean, whether it's a cheap stock or an expensive stock, now you're going to have some stocks more volatile. I'm going to agree with that 100%. Um, but if I'm looking at a specific sector, um, and Celeste might show her roadmap because she does this a lot. Um, but you can, I'll look at a specific sector, just like, you know, all the, all the utilities, you no know, XLU, Duke Energy and all those, um, throw them into a dashboard and find out who's the strongest and weakest. Just like you were showing on your screen through that TC, you no know, 2000, I can throw those into a dashboard. In fact, you'll notice down here at the bottom, I got quite a few dashboards. Here's just one on energies. Here's a bunch of energy stocks and stuff like that in this dashboard. So I can find out. Who's my strongest energy, my weakest energy? If I want to look at metals, here's a bunch of stocks out of the out of the metals industry. Um, if I just want to you know, look at you no know, just commodities themselves, here's all the commodities. So I can find out just by flipping through dashboards. And I got a bunch of them, as you can see, um, yeah. and look at various different sectors so I can find out in that sector who's strong, who's weak. I even have one that, I mean... Celeste will like this one. This is just a, a trade tracker on just ETFs. Um, and I can go through here very quickly and say, who's my strongest ETF sector wise up and who's my weakest one down. You can see USO is all green here. Most everything is Christmas tree are all red. Uh, you can see the metals, GLD, SLV, which we already discussed in that earlier. Um, but you have you no know, DBB, which is commodities. Um, cane, which is sugar. Uh, here's your URA that we were discussing the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can go down through here very quickly and say, Hey, this is the sector moving up and this is the sector moving down. And then I can go find out what's in that sector and throw them into you. a dashboard and find out who's up and down. That way I'm not mixing, you know, grapes and apples here. Right. Um, and that's one thing I don't like to do is no compare NVIDIA to, you know, <laughs> southern company right. it's not going to work that's what that was my that that yeah. that's where okay yeah that was yeah, the the screen did, sorry about that ray the screen didn't get shown but uh it's but all, make it's sure all, hey you guys i'm gonna have to head yeah, out it's all good it's all good you guys keep it going Les, um, you gotta go out. it's all good it's all good we're done we we're just good. we got it finished we're good all right just hey i want uh i'm doing a weekend flash meeting at uh 1500 today in the in the month meeting 1500 so, there you go. Celeste, great job. Great job, Roger. Great job, Jeff Rowe. And yeah. folks, Celeste is having an event at 1, 1 p.m., right? In just a few That's minutes. Right. So, SSL, I'll go there. Hey, what's that stock behind your head over your left shoulder there, Jeff? No, so up there, that's soybeans. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you didn't call me on that trade. <laughs> well, that was one thing I was going to discuss. You, um, the hogs and pigs report came out yesterday, and they were rallying uh, lean hogs into that report. And, man, they dumped them today. They actually had a whole lot more pigs than they thought they did. Yeah. So, yeah, my, hey, that's my kind of trade right there. I like that trade. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm going to be over in another room here in just about five minutes. And if you want to see how I took the knowledge that I learned from Jeff and Tom and turned it into a longer trade that pays astronomical returns, 
you might want to join me. I think it's pretty awesome. I wanted to show it to you there on the roadmap a little bit, but if you want to see it, you're going to have to join me in the room at one o'clock. So thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. It was great content uh, from everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Have a great weekend.